politicians, they're just, you know, coked up posh boys that think they can run the entire planet and it's just like, what? Did you vote to leave? Yes. Are you happy with how Brexit has gone? No. If, you're, if you want to come and work in our country and we need you, come! If you don't, if you're here for a payment holiday and benefits, then don't come. You know this, but uh, Boston had the highest proportion of Leave voters in the UK. Okay. Uh, does that surprise you? Um, not really, no, to be honest. <laughs> Would you want to go back into the EU? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I didn't really want to come out. I'm very much a Europhile anyway. It was only my ex-wife. <laughs> and the idea that Turkey would come into the EU and then we'd be loused out with thousands of Turks. I've got no problem with Turkish people. I love Turkish people. But to have all of my, my wife's family coming over, oh no. <laughs> I voted to leave Europe and I recognised the direction it was going in and it's authoritarian. So my other half, he's a farmer, he wanted to remain because there's lots of, uh, there was lots of gifts available to farmers um, in terms of subsidies. Um, I'm a business owner and I wanted to leave, I wanted to take back control of immigration and, and actually, ironically, neither of us voted. We were lying in a field in Glastonbury and we had this conversation that he was one way and I was the other and therefore we cancelled each other out so therefore it was okay that we hadn't voted because we were lying in a field in Glastonbury so uh, yeah but that's where we are on on that situation why did why did you vote to leave uh, I've got an ex-missus who's Turkish and I was rather afraid that we'd have all the Turks over here and, her, and an ex-missus is completely bonkers it's quite enough thank you the thousand a day perhaps coming over in these dinghies, I know that I feel sorry for them because they're escaping from terrible times. But why do they go through so many countries to seek asylum in England when there's other countries there? Because it's an easy ride, and the government's got to listen to us. I'm only one voice, but something needs addressing, it needs sorting out. You can't keep letting them come, putting them in hotels, and paying thousands of pounds a week to house them and then there's other poor people here what's from England what's homeless and they're laid on the streets how does that work did you vote to leave the EU in no the... I didn't I didn't vote at all what was it about the the leave movement that appealed to you well how can I say I suppose it's trying to look after your own and look after your your people in the town and when you look around the town you know, look at the the murder rate around the town. You've only got to look, you know, it's just, people need to start looking at this town. It's it's terrible, mm -hmm. you know. It's a place where I don't want to be anymore. I've lived in the town all my life. I don't want to be in this town. Because I t personally believe everybody has the right to um, to try and better themselves and bring their family along for the ride. If, you're, if you want to come and work in our country and we need you, come! If you don't, if you're here for a payment holiday and benefits, then don't come. There's a lot of foreign people working in the hospitals because they want to work. The trouble is as well, a lot of the English don't want to work. They just want to sit there and claim benefits. It's too easy. You know what I mean? I've worked all my life in the building trade and I've grafted all my life. And that's, that's how I've been brought up. But a lot of them, they just don't want to work. When I first came here, you know, like that was 12 years ago, it was much different than what it is now, so, you know, I don't honestly blame the locals, you know, for doing that. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Where did you come from? Uh, from Latvia. From first, yes. When I was in school, you know, I've heard, not to me personally, you know, to other people, like, go back to your own country. That was like, you know, I think, how to say, um, you know, that's what a lot of people said, you know, to, like, foreign people. Um, now, I can't really hear it that much, you know, because even when you walk around Boston, all you, all you do hear is foreign people rather than, you know. Did you vote to leave? Yes. Are you happy with how Brexit has gone? No. What's, why are you not happy about it? Um, when you look at it, I didn't really look at it in depth. You look at the, um, how can I say, you lose your collective bargaining. You, uh, you know, I was duped, really, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I jumped on that bandwagon. Of, yeah, let's get out and get... get. No, I was wrong. So you regret it? Oh, yeah, 100%.
Well, I, if, if I'm honest, I was a dispassionate lever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, that's because I, I, I kind of felt that you couldn't bring people with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a taxi driver in Rayleigh uh, before my brain tumour, mm-hmm. uh, which is a massive, which is in, in Essex, massive, Marc Francois, our MP, right. it was a massive leave voter mm-hmm. thing. Um, to be honest, I was dispassionate about it. But, but I, six years later, we're still in the state where we've got a load of people who say, let's leave it, look at this smoking pile of rubble, isn't it great? Uh, and we've got a load of other people on the other side that say, let's just rebuild it as it was, instead of rebuilding it brick by brick and bringing people with you. You look at what you lost through Brexit and, you know, you got, like, I try to explain to people when, as a, I was a union rep, and I know, I know as, as a group of, if, if you go, go in and command something or try and get something then as a group you get listened to as an individual you don't get listened to it's like if you go do a, a deal with another country to buy their gas or you know as a group you've got you've got bargaining rights you've got collective bargaining rights as a as one person going in saying i want to buy your gas they'll go well i'm sorry you'll pay our price but as a collective group you've got more clout you know my question is re- regenerated this place. If you'd have come here 30 years ago, yeah. it, it was just dying its, its, its backside, really. Mm. But now it's all vibrant. Look down here, you've got a t- Lithuanian restaurants, Bulgarian restaurants, Polish bakeries. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm. And obviously, they it's the Eastern Europeans that have turned to a really good creative re- renaissance for Boston. So what it was, the people voting in Boston against to leave, was fundamentally the, the, the old white British population, certainly pushed to that way by the right-wing press, etc., um, to, to take that viewpoint. But it, it's not it's not a general viewpoint. It's only on that majority of white English. And, of course, bear in mind, this has been a, an, a very much a, an agricultural area and consequently not a highly intellectual area um, where you've got all these other people coming in here taking all the jobs because they're actually doing the jobs and they're they're what's making this place is now if it hadn't been for the eastern europeans come here the the boston would have physically died 20 years ago it's it's absolutely fantastic what's happened now are you happy with how brexit has gone um, no, I don't think anybody's happy with how Brexit's gone. I, I think, the, um, bear in mind, my mind was a particular reason and whatever, but um, as far as uh, Brexit's concerned, it was ill thought out. Um, it's led to all kinds of issues, especially in Northern Ireland. And the, the fact of the matter is, we have to address this. We either got to get some sort of trade deal with, with Europe to re- restore most of what we had previously, or we, we've got to go back in. The, this idea of Britain as being able to be an independent country and out there in, in the bigger, wider world, it's never going to never going to scan. We're a small country. We're a has-been empire. We've got to, we've got to be a part of a bigger thing. Mm. And uh, this idea that we're all going to become uh, the whole new, wonderful England with is, is not always going to happen. It's going to keep forcing down wages, forcing down living conditions, which is not what we need. We need a broader middle class in this country. That's what we desperately need. It's no good having this wealth divide we've got at the moment. It, it, it's too, it's too divisional. It's, we've got to have something better than this. So we need to expand the middle class, which will probably mean have some form of uh, trade deal with, with, with Europe that's going to work. Um, I won't be here at the end of the day because of my circumstances. Uh, and I just hope that things will have moved on. My children will have a different view. My grandchildren will have a different view on things. I, I, I made the boat. I couldn't make it either way. Um, I... <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm old school at the end of the day. People weren't happy after 40 years. And I just worry that nobody still, even now, hasn't made a positive case for staying for it. Everybody seems to be fighting for, no, it's terrible. Yes, it's great or whatever. Mm-hmm. I kind of hope over the next 10 to 15 years, we'll move a little bit further, building it brick by brick. Why don't we just move forward one step at a time and bring people with you? Mm-hmm. Uh, at every step of the way, um, I, at the, I, 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 I don't know, to be mm. honest with you. Mm. It won't be my decision. I, I don't have to live with it. I, I, I voted leave because I didn't think it would have a, an, a, a great effect on me. And to be honest, it hasn't. What's something that would really improve people's lives in Boston? Um, Smiling. I'm going to go completely off the bat. Smiling, being nice to each other, stop attacking each other, looking for common goals.